Speak to me about this. How was it like in the 1994? Um, I mean, <clears throat> just like any, any Tutsi person, um, you had to run for your life. Um, so basically, I was, myself, I grew up in Congo. Um, and then 1993, after the Arusha Treaty, uh, my dad thought it was a good idea to come back. And then seven months later, you know, the genocide happened. And so we were right on that, on that hill with like the family members and other people, other Tutsis who lived on that hill called Progre, Ninyanza, Butai. And um, about 500 people died on that hill. I was only uh, among the four people who survived on that hill. So it was just, you know, a day to day um, running for your life, hiding from bush to bushes from, you know, that was, that was the situation. Right. And you survived that. And today you've lived on to tell the story, but also to look back at how this doesn't happen again. Some of the things that you've been very keen on as a youth minister at Prayer House also, you know, is leadership. Speak to me at how this was, you know, critical to the lead up of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. Um, I believe that um, in every society, in every, um, you know, organized society, Leadership is everything, right. you know. Uh, leadership, especially leadership that has all the platforms of, you know, uh, of of you know, basically communicating anything, any information to people. Um, leadership that has a way of like, you know, talking to people and telling them, hey, you know, this is what you, you ought to do. People listen, and people do according to what leaders think and what the leaders you know, asking them to do. So that's exactly what led Rwanda where it was. Mm. I feel like um, bad leadership led us where, where Rwanda went uh, 25 years ago. And, and also, but at the same time, uh, we've, we've experienced, we've seen what good leadership can do, you know, for the last 25 years. Basically, good leadership has led us to like a total redemption of a country that was completely dead. Um, I was nine years old when this happened, and I can tell you that every single clean, beautiful, nice street you see in Kigali in 1994, uh, it was full of dead bodies and basically dogs like eating out people's dead bodies. And wow. that was the only thing that you, you, we saw. But then good leadership has led us to where we are, to a place that attracts like, you know, tourists, a place that attracts uh, entertainment in the industry that is growing, musicians from all over. I mean, it's, it's what le good leadership, okay. it's what bad leadership versus good leadership can right. do. Right, allow me to bring Prince into this conversation. Prince, you were born in 1996, right? Mm -hmm. So that was two years after the 1994 genocide perpetrated against the Tutsi. When you learn about this from, you know, books, from school, from movies produced by Hollywood actors and all of that. What was your first impression? What do you make of it? Um, I think it's something that is very hard to imagine. Right. Something very hard to imagine um, happening, um, you know, growing up with someone, um, you have a neighbor, you know, your friends for such a long time and then these people turn on you. I think it's, it's something that is very hard to imagine. But also um, the picture that has been painted mm. Um, for the last couple of years. As I was growing up, there was so many um, ideas and, 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 and opinions of how this happened that has, you know, um, influenced so many people um, on how, on, 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 on what they think about um, the genocide perpetrated against Tutsis in 1994. Um, it's, 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 there's so many, so much information that is being spread out. Most, many of it is, is false, you know, from, from countries abroad that were not even, present when this was happening. Um, so as, as, as we grew up as young people um, after the genocide, there were so many things that, that we were bombarded with so much information. Um, and, and, and it was hard to, to, you know, to, to filter out what's right and what's wrong. Um, but luckily, uh, you know, this, this, uh, our government has been, has been very keen and very um, intentional in making sure that the right information is spread out and people are educated and informed on 
what happened, mm. how it happened, and what led to that happening. I want to pick your minds on this. Of course, when this happened, the only, you know, sort of media or, you know, medium to spread information was either radio or TV, which were heavily invested in by the government for only their agenda at that time. Today, when you look at where we're heading or where we are at the current situation, we're looking at our social media, which is spreading information at a very fast pace. But also, it has its good and bad side, right? You're looking at uh, young people who can share something that is rather very controversial or something that could build. But speak to me. How do we best use this uh, form of uh, media to communicate the right and needful right now? Olivier. Um, <sighs> I, I would have to say that um, us as Rwandans, we have, we have a story, we have uh, a journey that we've, we've gone through, especially for these last 25 years. And um, one thing I've seen, one thing I've realized that, you know, I mean, I'm a youth worker, you know, as you mentioned at the prayer house, we have a gathering of about 200 young people between the age of 15 to uh, 25 every Monday night. And we talk about all different subjects. So one thing I've seen is that when it comes to a critical matter, when it comes to showing sympathy, when it comes to like something that is really affecting the world, all of these young people come together in solidarity, and they don't use their platforms for like other, you know, crazy stuff. Which, which is like, I wouldn't blame young people. Young people will right. always be young people. So they would, you know, you, you will hear a story about like of someone maybe who released the nudes like today or tomorrow. Right. And that's like stuff that happened among young people. But when it comes to critical issues like commemoration, like, um, like being patriotic about right. your country, they really come together. Like they fight, I mean, right now you can do a survey right now. Every single social media I know is really, really transmitting a really good message. And, and that brings like up this. a question, Olivier, right? Why do we only do this in April? Because if Rwanda remembers, it's 25 years after the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi, uh, the mass atrocities that uh, took over a million people in just 100 days. Shouldn't it be more of our burden or our cross to carry to actually talk about this in each and every gathering other than waiting for the 7th of April and then we start doing this? Um, I think uh, this is a time that was, dis that it was, you know, it was designated for, like specifically for, for this. this. Yes. Um, so that's why most people like really show their, um, their sympathy, their, you know, their thoughts. They really like um, support, especially genocide survivors. Um, but honestly, as a genocide survivor, there is no single day that we go without like thinking about this. Right. Uh, even if we, you know, our day-to-day -day activities, um, for us, you know, we, we, it, it's it's something that we live with. <laughs> so uh, it's a good thing that people would show, you know, kindness and sympathy in in in, in this week. Right. But um, it doesn't mean that that's the only time at least genocide survivors think about this. Because every single activity we go through in life, it always reflects back to the people we lost. You, right. know? you know, when I get married, I'm like, oh, I wish my dad was here. When, when my child is like, is celebrating his, his first, first birthday, birthday. Yeah. like I wish like he, ha he met his grandma, like stuff like that. So it's, it's something that we live with on a daily basis, but obviously, we are appreciative of this, of our government thinking about a week like this of really dedicated to supporting and showing thoughts to us. Prince, take me back to that internet thing, the communication. How do we best tap into the growing internet connectivity in the country? By the way, we have about 100% uh, 4G rolled out in the country, but how do we best use the mediums that we have to make sure that what happened in 1994 doesn't happen again in Rwanda, but doesn't happen anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think it comes back to being intentional. Mm. Um, it comes back to being intentional. It comes back to young people taking ownership. Right. Um, we are here on behalf of young people. You know, um, we're talking to, the, to everyone watching, but uh, we want to target as well the young people because these are the people who are going to be here in the future. Mm. Um, there, there's so much information out there to be spread. Um, there's so many things that happen in this world, but 
there are, we also have to filter out what is really impacting our lives, what is impacting our nation, and, and, and be intentional about spreading, spreading this information. We have so many social platforms. Right. Um, you know, there's Twitter that, that has become this huge uh, platform for spreading uh, opinions, people are spreading a lot of opinions. Right. So um, I think as, 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 Rwandan, as the Rwandan youth, as the, uh, the generation post-genocide, uh, those that were young during the genocide, those that grew up in exile, um, because of their parents fleeing um, um, the genocide, we have to be intentional and take ownership, and and, and you know be, be be sometimes we have to be on the defensive side. You know, mm -hmm. there's so many things that uh, are being said about you know Rwanda, being said about what happened. You know, people are claiming um, uh, it was just a civil war or something right. like that. So we genocide have, denial. Genocide denial. You know, um, people are spreading uh, a lot of ideology that, that that is aimed at you know repeating what happened. Right. And we have to to take a stand. You know, we have to take a stand and be. We can't just look away. We can't just you know read read a tweet or read a message online and be you know like um, the government has this covered. Every young person with internet connection has to be using it for something that really matters. Right. You know, it's not just about taking pictures. You know, and and, and posting it. We have to do something that is going to not just affect us, but affect the generations to come. Right. Tonight, uh, you're having an event, Our Past, that has been happening for quite a moment now. And as Olivier mentioned, they have every Monday a gathering of over 200 youth. And I believe that uh, if we look back uh, from at least the 1990s, uh, the struggle for liberation of Rwanda, it was started by youth, by the young people. If we look at uh, the lessons that we can learn from the Nyanje uh, students who decided not to go separate, Hutu Tutsi or anything, and were killed together, these are lessons that we've seen for a long time. But what are we doing as young people at this moment to see that what we've learned, even the generations after us can learn Yeah, um, you can take it up. Okay. Uh, so um, you just mentioned Our Past. Right. Um, so Our Past is an event that happens every year, starting in 2012. Uh, and the aim for, of, of Our Past is educating the, 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 the generation that wasn't, th that has very little information about the genocide. Right. Um, they don't know what led to it. Um, they don't know what happened during the genocide. Or, you know, there's, there's so much, as, as I mentioned, there's a lot of information that is being uh, passed around. Right. So the aim of, of, of our past is to ensure that young people are informed. Right. You know, they're informed about what happened, who did it, and why they did it, you know? And we have different speakers from the government coming in. We have uh, former liberation uh, fighters who are now part of the Rwanda Defense Forces coming in to share information so that the youth is informed about what happened. And we're also empowering these young people, we're empowering them to, to take ownership and be right. part of different activities that are helping rebuild this nation. Um, we have um, activities that help uh, genocide survivors uh, that are financially challenged. Uh, right now we're working with a, a, a village in, in Narama, Narama sector, which is part of Bugisara district. Uh, for the past two years, we've been renovating houses. Uh, so far, we've completed renovation for five houses, and uh, we're starting an another phase for providing plumbing and, and, and electricity to these houses. So we're, we're, we're not just informing young right. people, but we're also giving them an opportunity to actually contribute um, to, the, to the rebuilding and the renewing of, of, of our nation. In 30 seconds, Olivia, what is your message to the youth and all business leaders that are watching CNBC Africa now? Um, you know, like every every leader, every older person, every young person, all together, we come together to ensure that this will never happen again. Basically, that's my message. Um, all all of us come together and make sure, not just like talk about it, because right. we've had people who talked about it and it has happened again. Mm -hmm. But you know, like teach young people. That's what we do. We last night we had our. Kibuka event uh, commemoration uh, nights. Uh, we are we are we are visiting um, we are visiting like genocide survivors this weekend. Like that's what we do. We are starting new talk series this this month called Our Story. We'll be talking about this. One of my there is this story that I met uh, you know this person in in Montreal a few right. years ago, and she was basically 
sharing with me the ideas that her, her, her family was like telling her. I was like, this is not you. You right. know, we have to wake up and make sure that we're owning our, our generation and right. doing the things differently from our parents. Right. So that's really what, I, what my message is. Thank you, Olivier. Thank you so much, Prince, for joining us.